Bentram is an amazing ambassador for Hong Kong. You've been traveling all over the world, uh, really promoting the story, and it's a great story. And now we have another uh, great story. We have with us uh, Her Excellency Natasha Pilivi. She is the uh, Minister of Shipping, Deputy Minister of Shipping of Cyprus, and she is going to present to us uh, the opportunities that uh, arise in uh, the Mediterranean region in energy, in shipping and of course in the uh, Cyprus Maritime Cluster. So we're delighted to have her with us. Hello everyone, um, thank you very much for, uh, um, for being here today and it's a great honor to be um, presenting to you. Um, I know that I'm the single obstacle standing between you and lunch so I promise I won't um, take too much of your time in this uh, presentation. So today I'd like to talk about um, a little bit about who we are and what we're doing in Cyprus um, and um, the role that we play um, sort of in Europe and internationally, particularly with regard to the energy developments in uh, Cyprus and how that can affect um, shipping. So uh, just as a little introduction, um, the relations between Cyprus and China have been uh, traditionally very uh, good. Uh, recently our president was uh, here actually at the end of April and he signed uh, the BRI um, and also had um, some, uh, some very good exchanges of ideas on collaboration including on, uh, on shipping, which we are here to take forward. So. Um, Basically, Cyprus, as you know, is a member of the EU, but it also has 60 double tax treaties um, with many different countries across the world. So for that reason, a lot of companies choose Cyprus as a location because it allows, um, obviously, access to the EU, uh, but also access to the continents around it, being at the eastern uh, outpost of the EU, so close to Africa and close to Asia. So, um, as you, of course, all know, following the news, um, Europe is going through um, some um, uh, challenging times with uh, Brexit and with various uh, different developments. Um, Cyprus is fortunate to have one of the highest uh, rates of growth in Europe, with 4%. Um, we have had the uh, same rate of growth for two or three years now, which is very, uh, very encouraging. Uh, and we've also been able to secure uh, some uh, funding through our international bond uh, um, sort of uh, um, um, releases um, uh, very recently as well as uh, previously uh, with some of the lowest bond yields um, ever for Cyprus. Um, and unemployment decreasing close to, um, close to 7% now um, and hopefully much uh, lower in uh, a couple of years as well. So um, one of the reasons why people choose Cyprus is uh, the business friendly environment. Uh, um, we've been a business friendly jurisdiction for many uh, years since our independence actually and we uh, very much uh, pride ourselves in that and we want to continue it. So offering an environment of stability is, is very important. In fact, in shipping we were the first EU jurisdiction to ever get approved uh, by the EU for our tonnage tax system. So uh, that is something that we uh, are definitely going to preserve in order to provide the stability and the certainty for all the companies that are actually uh, based in Cyprus. Now over there you see uh, all the main sectors of the Cyprus economy. Shipping is a very important sector. It represents 7% of GDP uh, at least and it's uh, probably um, third uh, uh, most significant sector in Cyprus after uh, tourism and uh, professional services, financial services as well. So um, where do we stand on the global map? We are the 11th largest fleet and the third in the EU and we're also the largest ship management centre in the EU and definitely amongst the top in the world. Um, so at the moment we have about 9,000 people employed onshore. That may seem like a small number uh, for such a large place uh, over here, but it's actually 3% of our uh, population, so quite a big uh, number for us. 
Uh, we do have, obviously, a lot of seafarers, a lot more seafarers on our vessels, and those come from all over the world because we don't have any uh, national restrictions, of course, on the seafarers aboard uh, Cyprus flagged free, uh, ships, which are also um, working uh, with an exemption on income tax and no social insurance uh, obligation in Cyprus. So, um, this, uh, if you like, is the background on which we've built a um, rather important cluster. We have, um, uh, as, uh, as um, similar, I suppose, to Shanghai, but much smaller scale, uh, some PNI clubs uh, operating or seeking uh, license in Cyprus because uh, also of Brexit, where we've had uh, three uh, PNIs uh, uh, recently applying uh, and one that's already uh, based there. We have uh, obviously, the legal accounting support services around the industry, and we also have uh, a lot of the suppliers that are um, servicing um, the industry in technology, as we saw with uh, Andres before, but also in uh, in every area: uh, spare parts, bunkering, um, ballast water systems, etc. So, um, where does the energy? Um, landscape fit in with the shipping. So over there you can see our map, you can see uh, Cyprus's um, exclusive economic zone and it's divided up into uh, various different blocks which are actually proving to be quite, uh, quite beneficial for Cyprus because there's quite a lot of oil and gas in that. Now this is not significant, so significant in itself um, if it were not for the large amounts of natural gas that are available in Egypt and Israel, EZs as well. Because the combination of all of that creates quite an important, uh, potentially important energy centre in the eastern Mediterranean. And that is really changing the geopolitical uh, landscape in, um, in the eastern Mediterranean, perhaps um, in Europe on a wider level. So, of course, uh, these, discoveries, this, these discoveries mean that uh, collaboration between uh, these nations is more and more important. And uh, Cyprus has been very fortunate in recent years uh, in that we have managed to foster and create, create and foster a lot of um, very, very good relationships with our neighbours. And that is really key to developing the infrastructure that is going to enable us both to explore but also to export uh, the gas that is available. So, um, just a few facts over there about um, the discoveries. Uh, so, the latest discovery actually is the third largest in the world uh, in the last two years, which is pretty good, uh, and estimated 5 to 8 trillion TCF. Uh, we also have another a couple of blocks which are commercially utilizable that have been explored um, so far, that have uh, had initial exploration in them so far, and another one which is of technical importance but not commercially utilizable. Now, uh, you might be um, wondering who is operating in, these, uh, in this area. Actually, we have uh, a lot of the oil majors already based in Cyprus, so we have um, you know, the likes of uh, ExxonMobil, ENI, Total, um, Noble, Cogas. So, um, so we're very happy that some of these companies and also some of the suppliers uh, to these companies have created a base in Cyprus and are actually servicing uh, other areas, other countries around the region from Cyprus. So this, we think, will create more opportunities for the shipping industry that is resident in Cyprus. Um, and we hope uh, also that the FSRU tender, which is actually uh, now in the process of um, seeking calls, uh, will also create a lot of opportunity for uh, companies to come and collaborate with, of course, the winners of the tender, who will be um, the various um, uh, proposals will be assessed and um, uh, and the uh, service provider will be decided upon in the uh, near future, as you can see over there. So, um, Shipping Deputy Ministry is a new deputy ministry. We've existed for about um, 
for about 14 months now. We were set up on the 1st of March. As I said, Cyprus has a history in shipping, but before we never had an autonomous uh, ministry that was taking care of shipping. We were under the Ministry of Transport. So this is a great development for us because it means that we can, um, we report directly to the President of the Republic and we have the power to actually make changes in a fast and proactive way. So uh, for sure, we want to maintain the stability uh, that I mentioned before and the friendliness for the investors, but we also want to make the changes happen that will actually um, enable uh, the cluster to, to grow. So um, single point of contact service is, of course, very important for us, uh, as is 24-7 service for our flag and uh, operating at the speed uh, expected by the international uh, industry, which is something that we do. Uh, we pride ourselves in our service and we hope to keep improving every day. Um, and that is certainly why we're seeking uh, feedback from our clients um, in order to be adaptable, in order to be uh, client orientated, and we're also leveraging on technology to become uh, more relevant. So, um, with that, we hope, as I said, that our services will improve and improve uh, as we move uh, along with, with, our, um, with our plans. Um, incentives, very important. We are continuously updating them. We are in contact with our resident industry. We actually have more than 200 companies now under our tonnage tax system, which are actually, uh, op you know, the, the ship owning, ship managing uh, and chartering companies that we have based in Cyprus. We have another 200 companies actually servicing those companies in, in our uh, in Cyprus, in Limassol, which is the main maritime centre. Uh, so we are in contact with them. They take part in a, a strategy committee which keeps um, informing us on the things that they would like us to do so that we can actually uh, improve all our uh, incentives as we go along. Uh, of course, the IMO and the EU are very important uh, to us. We, um, last year we got elected um, third in Category C uh, in the IMO Council, which made us uh, very proud. And this year we hope uh, to actually be able to uh, do that again. Um, but um, it's important to have a positive contribution in these fora. We listen to the discussions and we're very uh, aware that the community is seeking solutions that can be sustainable from an environmental perspective, from a safety perspective, and also from a profitability perspective. Um, so we have submitted papers at MEPC 73, MEPC 74 on uh, environmental issues, and we very much uh, listen to the uh, industry so that we can, of course, uh, provide um, comments and input of relevance. So, uh, blue growth strategy, also very important, is something that we are in charge of as a deputy ministry, and um, for that reason we do a lot to support education. Uh, actually, virtual reality, which was mentioned before, is something that is being introduced at our maritime academies for training that can take place on board vessels to make it easier for seafarers to not have to, um, to spend too much time um, on uh, uh, shore. Uh, and we also have managed to uh, be ranked third in the EU out of a total of almost 250 projects which were evaluated by the Horizon 2020 programme, which means that we have uh, secured financing to build a centre for innovation and excellence uh, for research and for business, which will be connecting the academia to technology and to the companies around uh, the cluster in order to develop the technological solutions uh, that the industry needs. So um, I'm very conscious of time, so I will uh, stop here by inviting you to our Maritime Cyprus conference. This is a big conference that we do every two years in Cyprus. Uh, it's our 30th anniversary of this conference in October, and we would love to see you all there uh, to continue the very interesting discussions. Thank you very much. Have a lovely lunch, and thank you for listening.